Hi, this is Mary Marinville, and welcome back to my Ventura County Farmer of the Month. And I'm here in beautiful Bardsdale, right outside of Fillmore. And I'm here at Bartels Ranch with Margie Bartels. Mm -hmm. And uh, how did your family get involved in farming, and how long have you been farming? Well, um, my family came um, on my dad's side from Germany to uh, this area in the early 1900s, along with many other German families. And they settled here and started farming. And uh, they originally farmed lima beans, and then they did walnuts and apricots in the early days. But in well, the last probably 50 years or so, the main crops have been Valencia and navel oranges. That's all you could see for several years here. And uh, the climate and the soil are, are very well suited for this kind of crop. So uh, they all did well with that and until about the year 2000. And then uh, Valencia oranges started to decline in popularity among the public. And they preferred the oh, easy to peel kind of fruits, you know, mandarins, with seedless. That's what kids like. So Valencia oranges declined in popularity and profitability. And so many of the growers have bulldozed their Valencia orange orchards and replaced those with avocados, lemons, or leased for row crops. So, um, but this was my heritage in farming here, Valencia oranges. That was what was, was always successful for my family. My grandfather farmed and my dad farmed all his life. So my sister and I wanted to continue farming our Valencia oranges as long as we could. So. I think it's really wonderful that you were so dedicated to the crop that your grandfather and father started. That's really, that's really admirable. Mm -hmm. Well, we wanted to continue on with that if we could. And we figured the more people remove their orchards, Valencia orchards, you know, the, that meant fewer, less competition for the rest of us. So we were hoping that that eventually uh, there would still be enough demand left that we could be successful with it. So, uh, but I, I started uh, farming here. I, I grew up on the farm, my sister and I did. And, uh, and I, but actually I went to college and got a bachelor's degree in business and accounting and worked as an accountant for several years in Santa Barbara area. And, but I knew I always wanted to be part of the farm someday. So in about 1990, I went back to school to Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo and got a two-year technical degree in fruit science. And then I did some work in the Central Valley, um, some seasonal work with um, trapping and pest management and that kind of thing, and got some experience there. And I ended up at the Farm Advisor's Office in Bakersfield, and I worked there several years helping the advisors with their research projects. And uh, that gave me a really good variety of experience outside of my own farm that helped me. So. Um, our folks died in 2000. They had heart attacks six months apart. So my sister and I were dealing with that, and that was about the time that, that Valencia started to go south. You know, things kind of deteriorated for the crop. So, so we had a lot of things to deal with, but um, we wanted to keep farming, and we've made it so far. So. And you're still here. still here. And you are the official ranch manager. And it's so nice for me to see a woman farming and ranching. I think that that's also wonderful. So I have to hand it to you. It's not a every day that I go to a farm and, and the ranch manager is a woman. Yeah. Uh, how many acres do you farm? I have 35. And uh, we also do farming for not just my sister, but um, uh, some family and uh, and friends out here, neighbors too. So we farm about another 35 acres in addition to that. And when I say we, I mean me and our, we have a longtime employee, Gilberto Castro, who has been with us for almost 20 years now. So he's been invaluable to us and, and knows how to do everything on the ranch. So we couldn't do it without him. And all 35 acres is Valencia oranges? All of all of our acreage that we farm, that I own and that we farm, is in Valencia's, yes. And one grapefruit tree. <laughs> well, one grapefruit <laughs> tree and a tangerine over there. But <laughs> And what do you see in the wave of farming in this valley? You said there was a change in 2000. Mm -hmm. Do you foresee any significant changes in the future? Well, I think uh, probably we'll continue to see replacement of older orchards like we have uh, and less profitable crops like we tend to have uh, into the other crops that I mentioned, the avocados and lemons and, and leasing for row crops. But um, 
I think, you know, it was surprising to me that in the last crop report that came out, uh, Valencia oranges had made number 10. Again. It's number 10. Yeah. Yes. And that was kind of a surprise. So that's a good thing. And uh, that gives us kind of encouragement to keep going with our Valencias. And plus, we have um, transitioned to organic growing in the last uh, few years. We became certified organic about this time last year. Wonderful. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and that was um, a three-year process. You start and you actually have to uh, discontinue all toxic pesticides or synthetic fertilizers and that kind of thing in order to become certified. And really, it was a pretty easy transition for us because the Bardsdale area here has been, uh, was under biological control for 80 years. Uh, we had our own insectary in town and all the growers were members of the, of the district. The, it was a cooperative kind of a thing. And we got um, regular uh, monitoring for pests and releasing of beneficial insects and that kind of thing. And really the growers out here did not use a lot of toxic pesticides anyway. So we were fortunate in that we were able to transition fairly easily. All we had to do really was go from the synthetic fertilizers to organic, organically approved fertilizers. Mm -hmm. So that was the main difference. And we already were cultivating for weeds rather than spraying herbicides and that kind Can of thing. Use beneficials? Uh-huh, yeah. We have a good population of native beneficials, so we haven't really had to supplement that, but um, but really it's the um, it's the fertilizers that are the key. And, and that's really one of the main issues, I think, is that the Organic fertilizers usually have less um, percentage of, say, nitrogen or something in them co as compared to conventional fertilizers. So it's an additional expense. You have to use more of them. Mm -hmm. But um, it's just a matter of monitoring the health of the trees and, and you know, planning ahead. And what characteristics do Valencias have? Like uh, what the skin, the taste, what some are some of the characteristics? Well, uh, Valencias normally have uh, thinner skin mm -hmm. as opposed to say a navel orange. You know, a navel orange is really considered the best eating orange because they're, they got the nice juicy sweet interior there, you know, and it's, it's delicious to eat. But uh, Valencias are also good to eat, but they have a thinner skin and they have seeds and so they're more traditionally thought of as a juicing orange. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, in Florida, for example, most of their Valencia orange crop goes to juice. But we try to, to sell as much of our crop as we can. As and where fruit. would we find your fruit? Where can we find your fruit? Well, our fruit is marketed through our packing house, which is Corona College Heights in Riverside. And they uh, actually take care of all the arranging for the picking and for the hauling it down to Riverside where they pack it, and then uh, marketing the fruit for us. And they have a good organic program there. They, they have a man on staff um, who actually really is in control of the organic program and, and really gets us good markets where we can sell our fruit. So, so they do all of that for us. All we have to do is grow it. And so we might be able to find it in the supermarkets? Well, I don't know if you could find our particular fruit there, but you might be, yes, that's well, we possible. Can, we can hope that yes. we do, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right, exactly. And is there a way we can learn more about um, your ranch? Is there a website you can send us to? I don't have a website, um, uh, so probably just the a Sunkiss website would be a good one to look at because they also do Valencia oranges and uh and other, you know, growers, uh, big growers like um, probably Paramount Citrus and those kind of places would have their own websites. But we're, we're too small potatoes for that. Okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> we still like the small farmers, yeah. especially the, the female ones. Uh -huh. So thank you so much, Margie. I learned a lot today. Good. And uh, good luck with your Valencia oranges. And yeah, thank, uh, you. thank you. Uh -huh. Saying thank you. goodbye from Bartels Ranch, this is Mary Marinville. And if you'd like to see this interview and other farm interviews on my my farmer sustainable farmer of the month program go to kadytv.com where they're rewriting the rules of local television thank you margie you're welcome <laughs>